Hello, I'm Joel from Joel's Comments Corner. So in today's video, we're going to talk about foil covers and why we love foil covers. So I'm just going to use a few from my example as to why we love uh, foil covers. For one reason, we love foil covers because they're always so shiny. So this is my name, Nato, uh, number zero um, from way back in 1993. So back in the 90s, foils became really popular and they started uh, producing quite a few different ones for like uh tie-ins for different covers for uh special issues so i'm going to show a few examples of different foil covers and ask a few questions along the way so like um my first question is do you guys have uh, foil covers in your collection i know i do because i love foil covers i loved the when i was growing up in the 90s i always tried to get uh the foil covers when i could and while they're not all Marvel foil covers, they're independent covers, there's DC uh, foil covers, they just became really popular and they uh, show the di very uh, different artwork. But this is Avengers uh, 369 is uh, the final part for the Blood Ties uh, storyline about the Avengers facing off a bad guy. And they decide to do... Uh, uh foil cover um uh, because it was part five so even though it's issue 369 which really doesn't make sense because they usually do a foil cover for like uh number one or issue 25 or issue 50 to accommodate um the the series getting up to those numbers but for because adventure has been going for a long long time and foil covers weren't really i guess a thing back in the 80s and the adventures uh, was going for a while as you guys can see so they ended up doing a uh, foil cover for this uh, one and it is really shiny it shows uh, the the Avengers on there with the bad guy and it's just uh, so cool and it's just um, really uh, awesome so let's talk about uh, collectors uh, from a collector standpoint not all um, not all foil covers are going to be uh valuable like this is still cover price or maybe like a five dollar issue um so th it, over the years just certain foil covers are not have not risen in value like uh this magneto cover here you can still find it uh face value from like it's a, a three to four dollar issue if it's in really bad condition you could even find it in your dollar bin uh session it just depends on uh, pricing uh, like everything is subjective to uh, grade and, and condition and all of that. But this is no more than, if you're paying no more than like $4 there, um, um, not your, I think you're getting a little ripped off. But still, uh, unless you're willing to get, spend the money and get these ones graded, which I would love to get this one graded, and I would love to get this one graded, then they'll be worth a little bit more. Uh, so like I say, not all foil covers are going to be, uh valuables uh over the years certain ones have not risen in price really so i want to uh and um, wish is uh uh prominent to this indie one called magnus a uh, robot fighter uh it went up to it went over 25 issues but they decided to do a foil cover on issue uh 25 because it march 25th issue and they did a variant foil cover with the the black highlight and look how shiny it is. And again, this is still just like a cover price, but it is only a three dollar uh foil cover, so it has not risen in price because it's. I do think collectors have overlooked certain ones, and I do think uh this is just such a cool um uh, uh issue. And the story is actually really good. Uh, there's lots of uh fighting with robots and stuff, so. Because it's Valen and it's an indie, I think just collectors overlooks certain uh, titles. Uh, like Shane Mantier's, this is a really good, uh, nice shiny foil cover. I mean, I have seen it a little higher price on eBay and and on the whatnot site. But still, it is at best a 3 to $5 uh, issue. Again, the popularity is not there. So that also uh, another factor into why the prices uh stay the same and it is a black blank cover on the back but it is nice shiny i love the red on here and it is a number one so that's probably why they did a foil for it 
Uh, I don't have the entire series for this, but I do have to have the number one, and I think I got it because it is a foil, and the claw kind of represents uh, Wolverine uh, there, so that which is pretty cool. So again, I I have a lot of different foils in my collection. I'm just a foil guy. I love uh foil foils. Now let's talk about the visual uh, aspect of the foils. And uh, foils are visually appealing because. Again, it, the of uh, the glossy cover, the feel of it, uh, uh is just uh, we all like the shininess of it, and sometimes they have three D, uh, holograph graphics. Um, this is and this is Tura the Dinosaur Hunter issue one. I really like this series because Tura is kind of like a Conan character, but he's in the dinosaur age and it's not really uh related to Marvel. It is with Fallon, which is did this guy as well. Valent has a really good uh, series out there. You guys should check Valent out there. They're a really good uh, publisher for stories, whatnot. So because Turk was number one, and it was this was uh, way back in 1992, uh, it, they did a shiny cover. As I said, the 90s started really the population, the popular for Gene, for the, the hologram, the uh, foils, whatever you call them now. And I, I am a fan. And again, this is a 3 to $5 issue because if collectors have overlooked it and it what didn't really gain popularity, which is too bad. Uh, people kind of dismissed it. But if you actually read the story, it is a really good uh, story. So as I've been saying, we've been uh, talking about mar market um, m marketing for uh, foils, where, whether uh, it's been used as a tool to try and generate more more sales from the series like some of these independent ones did not get the sales uh back then which is why it's been very uh why they're they haven't risen in price especially this one jim lee's wildcats really su super co cool this is where jim lee leaves uh dc uh where excuse me left marvel and he did, went on to image and I love this prism cover. I don't know why they did it with number two and not number one. But again, this is a Jim Lee cover. And he's now with DC. But still, this is one of his artworks. And the foil covers, look how shiny it is. And again, uh, because it's um, Wildcats, which wasn't super popular. And the set, they must have did it on issue two because they probably didn't uh, get the sales for number one. They did a shiny prism um, one so it is too bad that some of these image and valiant ones got overlooked but marvel even in the 90s did a whole bunch of um foils as well let's take a look at one of the more popular ones guardians of the galaxy example uh issue number 25 with galactus and they made it up to number 25 so that's uh pretty cool um really good story sure again um guardians wasn't really big back in the 90s so they probably did uh, foils and the Silver Surfer number 75 from way back uh, when um, that even though Sil Silver Surfer was a uh, established character so some of his uh, series books was not over uh, did not um, was not popular so overall what do you guys think of fo foils I'm going to leave the question do you have foil covers in your uh, collection do you not I, I do love foils and I love talking about foil covers and maybe I'll show more in the future, do another foil cover video for you guys. But it, foil covers are super cool. They're great to have. They're great to display. And they're just, um, get those $3 ones. Don't get the expensive ones because they're the popular. Get some of these independent ones. They're just really good, really cool. And like John Bryce, that's man, another excellent story. So you guys should check them out. Uh, thanks, everybody. I'm Joe from Joe's Comics Corner. Uh, tag and follow me. Thanks, everybody.